hi guys welcome back to another video where we discuss link aggregation on huawei devices uh, if you remember in our previous video we uh, discussed the troubleshooting and configuration for an ethernet trunk on huawei devices if you haven't watched that video i'm going to give that link in the right top corner you can visit that link and watch that video as well uh, in this session today, we are going to discuss multi-chassis lag on Huawei. Now, uh, if you know that uh, for Cisco devices, uh, the multi-chassis lag, pro pro lag protocol is called MLAG-P. Uh, in Huawei, we call it an E-trunk, which is actually an enhanced trunk. So let's see how does it work on Huawei devices and uh, what are its uh, working modes and constraints. And then at the end of the session, we will have a look at the configuration for e-trunks. So let's get started. So an e-trunk is actually used to implement device level link reliability instead of the card level link reliability implemented by LACP. Uh, it's an extension based on the link aggregation protocol uh, that controls and implements link aggregation among multiple devices. So as you can see in the diagram that we have two different PEs, P1 and P2. And we've got single C that connects to P1 and then the same C connects to P2. And also if you observe that we have Ethernet, Ethernet trunks configured on all the devices. So what happens is that we we configure Ethernet trunks on all three devices. Uh, the CE obviously having the a pair of Ethernet trunks, one connecting to one P and the other one connecting to another P. And then between the P, we generate heartbeat signals con by configuring an E dash trunk, which is the enhanced trunk, which is used for multi-chassis link reliability in Huawei devices. So. Uh, we can say that e-trunk is mainly applied to a scenario where a CE is dual homed to a network. Uh, without an e-trunk, a CE connected to only one PE by using uh, a single Ethernet trunk link uh, would face uh, connect loss of connectivity if that link fails or if that Ethernet trunk fails. So the communication between the PE and the CE will go down. But if you have a connectivity like this where you have got a multi-chassis lag, then even if one of the Ethernet trunk interfaces go down on the CE or from the PE side, the other link can easily take over because we are running the enhanced trunk multi-chassis uh, between all these three devices. So uh, as it says that E-trunk can be used to protect PEs and links between Cs and PEs. So in this way that CE is dual homed to two or more PEs establishing the device level protection instead of the link level protection that we have in normal ethernet trunks before we delve further in e dash trunks uh, there are a couple of concepts that we should uh, understand and those concepts are related to uh, lack p system priority and the system id priority so uh, in LACP, the LACP system priority is used to differentiate priorities of devices uh, at both ends of an Ethernet trunk link uh, when they're running LACP. Um, so what happens is, for example, if we have PE1 if, and PE2 connecting to the same C downstream, downstream and one PE has a lower uh, priority configured for LACP. So uh, the lower means the higher uh, system priority is that means that the priority is low the the weightage is high so if you have a lower priority on one p and the uh, priority is higher on the other p so the one with the lower priority would become the master for lack p however if we have a tie for lack p system priority that we have configured then it comes down to the system id that is used to determine the priorities of two devices at both ends of an ethernet trunk link if their lack priorities are the same Again, the smaller the system ID, the higher the priority weightage. So in this way, we can decide our master and backup uh, when we're running multi-chassis uh, lag between different devices in Huawei. Now we have something called e dash trunk priority as well. So uh, it's imperative that we configure the same lag P priority and the same system ID for the P's at both ends of an E-trunk link. 
otherwise we would probably run into a lot of issues if we uh, configure different priorities for lack p and system id so what however recommends is that you configure the same lack p priority and the same system id for p1 and p2 and let e trunk priority decide which one becomes the master and which one becomes the backup so this is where the e trunk e dash trunk priority comes into action what it does is that e trunk e trunk priority determines the master and backup status of two p's in a lag Obviously, when I say lag, so that means the multi-chassis lag where the two P's are connecting to the same C downstream. Again, the smaller the e trunk priority value, the higher the weightage for that priority. So what we do is we configure the same lag P priority, same system ID for both PEs, and then we let the e dash trunk priority decide which one becomes the master and which one stays as the backup. Then we have also called something called e trunk id an e trunk id is just an integer that identifies the e dash trunk so on an on a p you can have multiple e dash trunks configured for your multiple devices downstream each of the e trunk will be identified with an id number uh, where you can then view the configuration or you can um, display all these stats for an e dash trunk to see what's happening for example if i want to see the e dash trunk trunk number 10 which is going to let's say client number 10 downstream to, to the CE for client number 10. So I can do display E dash trunk 10 and I can see all these stats, the state, the uh, peer IP, the source IP, and there are lots of details that we will see at the end of the session that I can see in, in that command for that particular E trunk ID which we want to see for. As you know that we bind ETH trunk lag interfaces to E dash trunk when we uh, configure multi chassis lag. So the working mode of an ETH trunk, uh, Ethernet trunk interface that defines the working mode for an E dash trunk uh, in a multi chassis lag. Now the Ethernet trunk works in one of the following four modes. One is the automatic mode, the other one is the forcible master where we force the master uh, to be configured for a specific ETH trunk. Then we have forcible backup and then we have got a timeout interval. Now the timeout interval is the one where the master and backup devices, they keep sending hello messages to each other. And if the backup device does not receive any hello message within the timeout interval, then it takes over as the master. Now to understand the working principle of an E dash trunk, we need to refer to this diagram. As you can see that the CE is connected to PU1 and is connecting to PU2 as well uh, using Ethernet trunk 20 that is configured for the CE itself. Then we have Ethernet trunk 15 for PU1 and Ethernet trunk 15 for PU2. And we have E dash trunk 10 for PU1 and PU2 uh, that exchanges heartbeat signals between the two PUs so that um, the multi chassis lag works as expected. Uh, the, it's important to note that the same E trunk and E trunk are created on both PEs, uh, and uh, also that the CE uh, doesn't know about the E dash trunk. So the E dash trunk is invisible to the CE. The CE is oblivious of the fact that the PEs are running multi chassis lag. So in a scenario where one of the links, like for example, this trunk goes down, the CE would start forwarding packets to PE2 because the E dash trunk makes sure that the multi chassis lag is in operation and the CE would just think that I have another part to go to the uplink and it will start sending packets to that side. So it doesn't even know that they are running E dash trunk over there between the two PEs. Now to determine the master and backup status for an E dash trunk. P1 and P2 they negotiate that status by exchanging E dash trunk packets. Uh, obviously, uh, once the negotiation is done, then one P becomes the master and the other one becomes the backup. Uh, then the master and backup status of a P depends on the E trunk priority and E trunk ID carried in those E trunk packets. Uh, as we discussed earlier, that the smaller the E trunk priority value, the higher the E trunk priority weightage. However, in a case where we have a P with the uh, priorities or as same for both of them, 
then the PE with the smaller E trunk ID becomes the master. So in a case where we have P1 configured with an E dash trunk priority of let's suppose, suppose 5 and we have a P2 which where we configure the same priority for E dash trunk. Then the E dash trunk ID obviously they are going to be different for both P's and they will then define which one is the master and which one is the backup. Uh, then to determine the master and backup status of uh, an of a member Ethernet trunk uh, in an enhanced trunk. So, for example, we have Ethernet trunk 15 as the member Ethernet trunk for an for this enhanced trunk 10. So that uh, status of a member Ethernet trunk is determined by its E trunk status, and obviously it also includes the remote Ethernet trunk status uh, for that. But if uh, to keep it simple, if the E trunk status is master for P1, so that Ethernet trunk member should be master for P1. Uh, so it's a combination of both, but if uh, usually one, if the E-trash trunk uh, is the master for one P, so obviously the remote side would comply to that, to that, and we have an Ethernet trunk member master here on P1. So this is how the E-trash trunk works uh, with Ethernet trunks. Uh, it's, it's a bit complicated, but once you start uh, getting yourself familiar with this, with the configuration, with all the concepts, then uh, you would find it much much easier so i hope this clears the working principle and uh, let's have a look at some of the limitations for e dash trunks uh, in the next slide now there are some limitations that we need to uh, be careful of when uh, running e dash trunks so to improve reliability between the ce's and p's taking part in multi chassis lag we need to comply with the following rules Number one is that the configuration at both ends of the E dash trunk link must be consistent. So that means uh, that the Ethernet trunk links connecting directly uh, to the C from the P's, they must be configured with the same working rate and the duplex mode. So then they become consistent. Um, also, the interfaces connecting the C to P1 and P2, they must be added to the same Ethernet trunk. However, the Ethernet trunks on the C can have a different ID from that of the P's. So, for example, if an uh, Ethernet trunk on the CE is configured uh, as Ethernet trunk 5, the Ethernet trunks on the P's can be configured as Ethernet trunk 10. But obviously, we will have Ethernet trunk 10 on P1 and P2, the same on both P's. But they can differ from the Ethernet trunk that is configured on the CE side. Then we have the IP address of the local P that must be same as the local address of the remote P and the IP address of the remote P must be same as the remote address of the local P so that the latency connectivity is intact. Uh, it's actually it's recommended that the addresses of the P's are configured as loopback interface addresses. And also uh, we need uh, the two P's to be configured with the same security key uh, if that is required between uh, the P's for e-trunk connectivity. So there are some limitations that we need to be uh, wary of. Uh, um, other than that, the e-trunk configuration is pretty straightforward. Uh, I'll show you that in the in the uh, next slide. Uh, that how do we configure it and how do we troubleshoot an e-trunk? So to configure an e-trunk, uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, what we do is we go under the configuration mode uh, and we define the e dash trunk ID first. Where, like for example, we have done here e dash trunk 10. Uh, then we define the pair address, which will be the pair, the IP address of the other PE. Uh, so in our case, for example, it's 10.10.10.2. The source address will be our own PE address. So that could be your loopback or your uh, any address interface address that you want to use as recommended that we use the loopback addresses for these. Uh, then uh, disable. Uh, so this is another command that you can add if you want to uh, avoid preemption. Uh, and uh, then we have uh, a BFT configured for uh, the uh, E dash trunk connectivity between the two P's so uh, as to have fast convergence. Uh, and then you can describe your client uh, for which the E dash trunk is to be configured. Uh, so similarly, you configure the other side, the other P, where the configuration is the same, but you just change the peer address and the source address according to that P. Uh, so in this way, the E dash trunks are configured. Once the E dash trunk is configured, then you bind your Ethernet trunk interfaces to this E dash trunk. 
uh, and then uh, once they are bound uh, then you're good to go you can easily monitor the connectivity and starts for your e dash trunk to monitor that to monitor that uh, you use this command which is display e dash trunk 10 so it will show you lots of information uh, the important information that you should see uh, under this output is the e trunk id the e dash trunk priority to determine the master or backup for the e trunk uh, the peer ip the source ip to see which one is the source and which one is the peer uh, pe that you're going to the e dash trunk state so this defines the master state or the backup state for your e trunk in the output and then e dash trunk working mode and then you can also see the your the ethernet trunk which is the member that is bound to the e dash trunk so you can see the id for that ethernet trunk and you can see the state in which that ethernet trunk is working in that e trunk uh, and it also shows you uh, if if the master switch is uh, uh, goes down and it switches over to the backup the backup becomes the master so it also shows you the reason for that the what made the master to go down and what made the backup to become the master i think it's called the causation tab uh, option under this output if I remember correctly uh, but obviously it shows you a lot of stuff so these are some of the important things that you should be looking at while troubleshooting e dash trunks uh, uh, in uh, a Huawei environment or on any Huawei device where we have multi chassis lag uh, so this brings us to the end of this session uh, I hope this has been informative for you and in case you have any questions regarding the e dash trunks or even ethernet trunks uh, which are for uh, lag P configuration where we don't have multi chassis lag so if you have any questions regarding that as well just feel free to drop a comment below and i would love to answer them uh, i thank you for your time uh, and uh, i look forward to seeing you in the next session thank you